With every year that passes, Google decides to make Android kind of better when it comes to the experience that you have on a Pixel device. And mostly when it comes to the OEMs, they do get mostly a better experience. But when it comes to the outside area of that OEMs, uh, Google, Samsung, uh, Xiaomi, OnePlus, et cetera, et cetera, the AOSP space for Android becomes actually worse. And this hasn't just started happening. This has been happening for years. I myself uh, have been using custom ROMs on many different phones over the past decade of when I was like 12 years old because I wanted more customization. I wanted more freedom when it comes to using my phone. Like, for example, over the past decade, I would say, of buying different phones, um, I have a Google Pixel XL, even though this ran, uh, you know, Pixel, the Pixel experience, uh, like stock Android, I still installed custom ROMs on this because it had uh, a pretty big community of custom ROM support. Places like, um, you know, AOSPA or Pixel Experience or Evolution X, Resurrection Remix, Dirty Unicorns, all of those ROMs were really popular at the time and it was an awesome experience when using this phone instead of using the uh, Pixel normal stock Pixel ROM. Then I also got the Poco F1 overseas uh, to Australia and this phone had one of the most best experience with custom ROMs and the reason for that is mostly because it was a really affordable bang for buck phone and it had an amazing uh, Snapdragon 845 processor at the time so it was a flagship killer phone and then on top of that the custom ROM support was absolutely insane. And then the last phone that I got before getting another phone that really doesn't have that much great custom ROM support uh, was the Poco F3. So from the Poco F1, I upgraded to the F3 because I was like, why not? Uh, they're still selling these rather bang for buck affordable phones with a rather top of the line uh, processor in them from Qualcomm. And the custom ROM support was pretty damn good. And the reason I had to upgrade from this phone, which this phone worked perfectly fine with custom ROMs. And the reason was because of the Australian government uh, starting to shut down 3G. But that wasn't the problem. They also started blocking phones that they said weren't certified to work in Australia. And this was one of these phones because it's overseas. Even though it supported all the bands, uh, it was blocked. So I had to upgrade to a new Android phone. And the phone that I upgraded to was a OnePlus 12R. Now this phone is amazing, I would say, when it comes to the performance, when it comes to the battery life, when it comes to the you know, speakers, the cameras do an all right job. Uh, and then when it comes to Oxygen OS, um, you know, it's an all right experience. Uh, but again, when it comes to custom ROM support, I did try to use custom ROMs on this and it did work, but the experience wasn't so great. And when it came to the compatibility uh, of, of the ROMs that were available, there wasn't that much. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that custom ROMs are terrible now. It is just because I've chosen a phone that is a little bit more expensive than what the custom ROM maintainers could really afford. Uh, so when it comes to the more popular phones, uh, you would be looking at more, more of the cheaper end or mid-end phones for custom ROM support. But I thought, you know, oh, it's okay. Um, I can still, uh, you know, do third party installs to try and remove as much things as possible to get a better experience when it comes to the freedom of what I can install on the phone. And well, if I do change screens here, and one of the things that Google is deciding to do is block sideloading, basically. Now, not uh, fully necessarily, but it's basically going to block unverified Android applications. So the developers who maintain uh, some popular apps out there that aren't available on the Play Store, well, they're going to have to try and provide uh, information like their identification. Uh, they're also going to have to like pay certain fees maybe when it comes to that application they want to have on Android for their users. So basically, uh, you have to go through a verification process now, or soon in 2026, uh, to try and get your app available for Android users, which is a similar practice that 
Apple does with iOS. Uh, when you install uh, a sideload, an application on iOS, one, I'm pretty sure it only lasts like a week or so. That's when I used iOS on my iPhone 6. And that was like, what, like seven years ago or something. Uh, it would, the app that you would sideload would uh, only be able to be used for in a week. And then you would have to reinstall the app to then get another week out of it. It was ridiculous, I would say. And as this article says here, Android's open nature set it apart from the iPhone as the era of touchscreen smartphones began nearly two decades ago. Little by little, Google has traded some of that openness for security and its next security initiative could make the biggest concessions yet in the name of blocking bad apps. Google has announced plans to begin verifying the identities of all Android app developers and not just those publishing on the Play Store. Google intends to verify developer identities no matter where they offer their content content and apps without verification won't work on most Android devices in the coming years. Google used to do very little curation of the Play Store or Android market if you go far enough, but it has long sought to improve the platform's reputation as being less secure than the Apple App Store. Years ago, you could publish actual exploit in the official store to gain root access on phones, which is true. Uh, the you know, Many people, including me, the, the Android Market Store especially, back before it was called the Play Store, was very sketchy indeed. But now there are multiple reviews and detection mechanisms to reduce the prevalence of malware and banned content. While the Play Store is still not perfect, Google claims apps siloed from outside its store are 50 times more likely to contain malware. So basically what they're saying here is they're going to you know, do this verification on sideloading, uh, blaming sideloading applications as the main way for gaining malware instead of trying to improve the Play Store itself. Uh, as as people have said, the Play Store still may contain malware with certain applications. So we have Google starting to basically block sideloading unless you're a verified developer. And I've heard also that they uh, they want developers to try and put their apps in the Play Store, then just doing sideloading, which you do have to pay fees to have your app on there. It's like $20 or something to get your app on there. And it's like a monthly cost as well. And then they take a percentage of your earnings if you have any type of like uh, purchasing within the app or maybe even ads as well. And not just on top of that, uh, Google does make custom ROMs more difficult over the time. You know, when I used custom ROMs, like I sound old here, but when I used custom ROMs when I was like around like 12 or 13, uh, back up to like around maybe a couple years ago, uh, Google used uh, the AOSP apps when it came to like messaging, the phones app. Uh, and what they decided to do was move to their own proprietary applications when they were creating the whole Pixel experience. So basically when the Pixel XL released, uh, they started moving away from AOSP. So like, you know, like 26, 16, 2017, and they started creating their own proprietary applications like Google Messages, or it's just called Messages now, the Google Phone app. Uh, and that hindered the experience with custom ROMs a little bit because now if you install an AOSP ROM, you are getting a lesser experience, I would say, because you're missing things like RCS, for example, which is encrypted messaging and allows you to send higher quality photos to many different people. And not just that, the AOSP applications themselves are dated by design as well. And when it comes to the UI of the applications, they are dated as well. Uh, I would say the, you know, the messages, the phone app, they all look like they're from Android 7 or like Android Marshmallows, or Android 6. Uh, really dated applications, I would say. And like with the custom ROM making it more difficult from Google, Google complicates development of custom ROMs such as Lineage for Pixel smartphones. The hardened Android version Graphene OS is particularly affected. Google is throwing a spanner in the works of the custom ROM community with the release of Android 16. The company has also released the source code of the new OS version in the AOSP project, which independent developers can use to compile their forks of the operating system under the fairly permissive Apache 2.0 license. However, the company has not included the device trees for Pixel devices that were previously released at the same time. So when it came to all the nice Pixel features that you would get on custom ROMs, like with Pixel Experience or Pixel OS currently, which is a lovely custom ROM that I have used before that gives you a Pixel experience as much as possible, uh, those ROMs are going to be harder 
to try and get those pixel uh, features now. Google ASP is, is alive, but the company has not published either the driver, binaries, or the complete kernel source code commit history, thus deviating from its usual practice to date. This omission led to speculation that Google could possibly discontinue the ASP program altogether, as the makers of GraphicOS said. But it's not that dramatic. ASP will remain as Google's vice president and general manager of the Android platform. I don't know how to say that name. Uh, that's that's a, uh, I don't know, like an Asian or Chinese or something name. Uh, AOSP will not disappear. AOSP was built on the foundation of the open platform for device implementations, SOC vendors, and instruction set architecture. However, the manager confirmed that the lack of pixel device trees was not a mistake. He explained that AOSP needs a reference target that is flexible, configurable, and affordable, regardless of any particular hardware, including Google's. So overall, this is making the experience worse for custom ROM developers, uh, basically get being stuck on the AOSP base because like I said, AOSP is not good anymore. Uh, Google has separated themselves from the AOSP project almost fully when it comes to their application side of things and the little features that they include with their Pixel devices. And this brings more issues for ROMs like uh, Pixel OS, Graphene OS, Lineage OS, uh, Evolution X, uh, AOSPA, even though they, they still only do releases every like couple years, they're still around. And then on top of that, there's things like uh, if your phone is rooted, you get a worse experience now on an Android phone, uh, like blocking RCS silently. You're not able to use RCS. Now, of course, there is ways around that when with all the different modules that you can add to your rooted phone with Majisk. Uh, you can get around that, but still, um, you know, Google is just making it harder for one custom ROM development, two, when it comes to a phone is rooted, and how how banking apps think that having a rooted phone or a locked bootloader is a worse thing and it has less security uh, is kind of not true, I would say, because you know, with a rooted phone, you can actually enhance the security. You can add things like an ad blocker, stuff like that that makes it better for you. And it's no surprise that, you know, uh, Google making things worse over the past you know, like decade or even before that, they have been killing tons of different projects that they have made. Uh, for me, uh, Google Plus was one that I used quite a bit when it came to the custom ROM uh, development side with the different communities. Uh, they all used to talk on there. Google Plus was killed uh, and you know, that's pretty Stupid, I would say. Uh, I think the platform was pretty damn good and they just decided to kill it. You, know, you can see here, like Google Duo. Uh, there was some other ones. Google Stadia, you know. Uh, what else is here? There's uh, the VPN that Google tried to start. Chromecast as well. Now you only have like the Google TV, which I do have in the living room. YouTube Go, Google Surveys, Google Chrome Apps, uh, Google Duo, if I didn't say that, Material uh, Gallery, Android Things, Your News Update, Google Sites Classic, uh, plenty and plenty of all different types of projects that Google has killed. It is so dumb and ridiculous that they had to kill so many different projects. And I know that over time, uh, you know, they would have to kill some projects, but it's actually stupid how many projects they have decided to kill. So if the blocking of sideloading does actually arrive in 2026, I will leave Android as the title states, I will leave Android because it is no longer the open source platform that it used to be. Sure, AOSP is still there, but the actual experience that you get is no longer an AOSP experience. They are making the experience more like iOS with iPhones. So of course, where would I go if that was the case? Well, the only real choice is either to not go anywhere and just deal with it, or try and move to Linux Mobile. Now, Linux Mobile is still in uh, development, I would say. It still has plenty of bugs. Uh, the desktop environments, you could say, that are uh, installed or the mobile desktops that you can install on it are not ready yet. But uh, places like Post Market OS is one that you can grab which is the Linux distribution for mobile devices and beyond. So it's not just for mobile devices. It could be used for a tablet or a touchscreen on a laptop. 
and they offer all different types of user interfaces. And as you can see here, they do have a wide list of different phones that are supported with post market OS. Now, not every device uh, is going to be working with every single component within the phone, but phones like the OnePlus 6 or the 6T, I know a lot of people like to install post market OS on that device. Of course, there is some of the uh, Linux mobile phones like the Pine phones that you can grab. They also are supported, but one phone that I mentioned at the start of this video was the Poco F1, which as we can see here, it is running post-market OS and it's running the KD mobile, mobile desktop environment. And when it comes to it, uh, you know, it's definitely not ready. And my green screen is removing a bunch of colors. You guys can't really see it, see it that well, but um, you know, it does have you know, a decent UI when it comes to a mobile experience. Uh, it is very similar to Android. Uh, and when it comes to the um, GNOME mobile experience, that uh, is pretty similar to Android as well. But of course, there is problems with it. Uh, things like mobile connectivity, I've heard uh, since, you know, all the Qualcomm drivers are proprietary and they, they are forced to be, um, that could be an issue. Uh, either it be Qualcomm or, or Samsung's one or Google's processor chips or, um, you know, all the other chips that are required to do that. Linux mobile might have an issue with that. And then of course, when it comes to applications, there is not the, you know, there's no X, there's no Reddit, there's no Telegram, there's no, uh, you know, all those social media apps are not available. Plus, you know, games are not. Now there is ways you can get around that, like Wagewood, for example, but the overall experience is not ready, I would say. But a year from now, what could the experience be? Who knows? It could actually be a pretty decent experience. So hopefully, uh, you know, Google doesn't go through with this siloing block and we can continue to use Android in some form of freedom uh, to just install what we like. But I think this is going to go through, in my opinion, uh, with what Google has been doing with Android lately. Uh, over the past decade, it has just been uh, a really uh, disappointing, really. I'm, I'm really disappointed in Google. But at the same time, I'm not really surprised because Google has been killing so many other damn products projects over that past decade and beyond. So I would like to know your thoughts about the whole Android situation. I do know that side loading will basically still be there, but when it comes to, uh, you know, how many apps you're allowed to side load, uh, it will be limited to the applications developers and if they're verified or not. So I'd like to know your whole thoughts about that. And of course, just about Android in general, uh, you know, your experience with it, uh, you know, the issues with Android just overall this past decade been getting, I would say, more or less of a freedom of an OS to use. But if you guys did enjoy uh, this rant video, definitely give it a like, definitely subscribe to the channel, and thank you to my supporters. I'll show a text across the screen. Thank you, money every single damn month. And again, thank you for 16,000 subscribers. I really do appreciate that. Hopefully, we can get even more, uh, but doesn't really matter in my opinion. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.